black people are so tired. Ahmaud Arbery couldn't even go jogging. Botham John and Atiana Jefferson couldn't even relax in the comfort of their own homes. Renisha McBride and Jonathan Farrell couldn't even ask for help after being involved in a car crash. Stephon Clark couldn't even have a cell phone. Jordan Edwards couldn't even leave a party to get to safety. Jordan Davis couldn't even play loud music. Alton Sterling couldn't even sell CDs. Ayanna Jones and most recently Brianna Taylor couldn't even sleep peacefully. Mike Brown couldn't even walk home from a corner store. Tamir Rice couldn't even play cops and robbers. The Charleston Nine couldn't even worship God in church. Trayvon Martin couldn't even walk home with a bag of Skittles. Sean Bell couldn't even hold a hairbrush while leaving his own bachelor party. Oscar Scott, Oscar Grant couldn't even party on New Year's. Sandra Bland couldn't even have a normal traffic stop. And even though we supposedly have the right to bear arms, tell that to Philando Castile, who couldn't even lawfully carry a weapon. Corey Jones couldn't even have his car break down on the side of the road. John Crawford couldn't even shout at a Walmart. Terrence Crutcher couldn't even have a disabled vehicle. Keith Lamont Scott couldn't even read a book in his own car. Walter Scott couldn't run. Freddie Gray couldn't live. And we've been reminded recently that then Eric Garner and now George Floyd couldn't even breathe. America suffers from willful ignorance and willful blindness. Willful ignorance is the practice or act of intentional and blatant avoidance, disregard, or disagreement with facts, empirical evidence, and well-rounded arguments because they oppose or contradict their own existing personal beliefs. A white student recently lost her scholarship to play lacrosse for Marquette University because of anti-George Floyd comments she made. She said, quote, some people think it's OK to kneel for the national anthem. So it's OK to kneel on someone's head. Come at me, y'all brainwashed, close quote. Willful blindness is a term that is used in law to describe a situation in which a person seeks to avoid civil or criminal liability for a wrongful act by intentionally keeping themselves unaware of facts that render him or her liable or implicated. Laura Ingram, a couple years ago, had some choice words for two Black NBA prominent superstars, LeBron James and Kevin Durant in regards to comments that they made regarding the current political climate. Her response to them was, quote, it's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid $100 million a year to bounce a ball. LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and drool. But it's ironic that she came to the defense of prominent white Saints quarterback, Drew Brees, who recently said that he will never agree 
with anyone who chooses to kneel for the national anthem or disrespect the flag. She said regarding his comments, quote, well, he's allowed to have his view on what kneeling and what the flag means to him. He's a person. He has some worth, I would imagine. This is beyond football, though, close quote. Apparently, Laura Ingram lacks gumption and current blatant common sense because she doesn't see or want to see the hypocrisy of what she is saying in reference to coming to the defense of Drew Brees while chastising LeBron James and Kevin Durant. Because last I checked, Drew Brees did get did not get voted for either. And this is the problem with America because America does not look at things like this as a problem. And until America realizes its alleged promise of freedom, justice and equality for all of us and not just some of us, it will continue to go on. The reality is that America doesn't like to be held accountable. America is not sick of this. America is only sick of being exposed and being put under scrutiny. America wish that it could continue with the cruelty without any accountability. But the reality is with the advent of social media, the world is watching. The most high is watching and vengeance is his. It's interesting that with this current COVID-19 plague, this pandemic that's going on right now, America has been impacted and hit more than any other country in the world. And that's not a coincidence. Hip hop artist and actor Common said, some said something a few years ago that's still prevalent even in 2020. He said, the cage bird sings for freedom to bring, black bodies being lost in the American dream, blood of black being a pastoral scene, slavery still alive, check amendment 13. Not whips and chains are subliminal. Instead of the N word, they use the word criminal. Sweet land of liberty, incarcerated country, shot me with your ray gun and now you wanna trump me. Prison is a business. America's the company. Investing in injustice, fear, and long-suffering. We're staring in the face of hate again. The same hate they say will make America great again. No consolation prize for the dehumanized. For America to rise, it's a matter of black lives. And we're going to free them so they can free us. America's moment to come to Jesus. The reality is we're tired. We're tired of dying. Tired of making hashtags, tired of trying to convince white America in general that our black lives matter too. And the reality is that point seven of the Black Panther 10 point program still applies to this very moment in time. We still want an end an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. We wanted it then, and we most certainly want it now. Rest in power to Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and to everyone that we've lost because of police brutality, because of the delusional, and because of the terribly misinformed.